Hey, welcome back to the channel. It's been a while since I put a video out, but I've been working on some new systems and now I'm back at it. So I want to talk today about a copywriting rule, a rule that I break pretty much every day and why you should break this rule too. Now, if you're new here, my name is Sean and on this channel, we talk about writing online and how to make money from writing online. So if you want more content around that, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button so you don't miss any of my future videos. So let's jump into my computer screen. What is this copywriting rule that I break every day? And why should you think about breaking this rule too? So I actually don't know who originally came up with this rule, but a couple years back when I started building my audience, I said, screw it, let's break this rule and see what happens. And the result was I had been building my audience and posting content for a few months. But as soon as I made this change, I noticed less haters, a lot more engagement, a lot more sales, and more consumption of my content and offers, meaning better client results as well. So I also have a friend, Jacob Karras, one of my online friends, he runs a seven-figure info publishing business, told him about this rule that I use and, I, and that I break every day. And he saw the same thing, same type of results. As soon as he started breaking it, more views, more engagement, more sales, more people going through and implementing his stuff. So what is this rule? The rule is don't use the word I or my and always address the reader or the, the watcher, the listener by saying you and your. So this is the rule and I break this rule all the time. So let's discuss why would you want to break this rule or why do I break it? <clears throat> so think about why you follow or listen to the people that you do. The reason why is because they did something noteworthy that you want to do too, or that you want to follow along with. Maybe they have some sort of inspiring mission, or maybe they're building towards a certain mission. But the reason you're following them is not just because they say you or your, it's because they're working on something noteworthy. So when I thought about every person that I follow and that I'm influenced by, I noticed the same thing, that they're not saying you or your at all. They come at it from the, the perspective of, here's what I've done, like here's my story, here's something that I worked on, here's what I've experienced, or here's a win or a loss or a mistake that I've went through. And so everything that they're saying is coming from their perspective. So they treat their content almost like a public journal where they're sharing all these things here. So the problem with using you and your all the time, especially when you're someone who's just starting out, is that when someone tells you to do something, what is the natural reaction there? When someone says, here's how you should do this, or here's why you need to do this, or you should do this, or you should do that, what is your natural reaction? For me, if you're anything like me, it's, I'm going to be, be questioning, okay, sure, you're telling me to do this, but why should I listen to you? That is the first thought that comes to mind. So naturally, I get defensive. If you're telling me to do something, I don't like to be lectured. I don't like to be told what to do unless there's a reason I should listen to you. So if you are coming at it, let's say you're a new creator or you want to start building an audience and you're trying to tell people what to do and, and you're regurgitating all this how-to content, you're going to trigger that defense mechanism, that question of why should I listen to you? And that's when haters come and that's when people are like, well, why are you saying to do this if you've never done it? Which you shouldn't be doing, by the way. So if you don't have a compelling answer for why people should listen to you, that's when haters come. That's when you, instead of having followers and sales, you're getting people questioning you and your background. So I actually have a friend like this. Uh, he's, he lives in Hawaii, but he's always trying to, he's always texting me and telling me what to invest in, you know, what stocks and cryptos and sports teams to bet on. He's telling me where to buy real estate and, and how to do these things, but he's, he doesn't have much money. So he's, he's pretty broke. He lives paycheck to paycheck. He's always telling me what to do. And the only thing that I can think of is why should I listen to you if you're broke? So this is the same thing. It's like, if you are broke Billy here, um, let's call him Billy, right? His name's not actually Billy, but he always tells me how to invest my money. Yet he doesn't have nearly as much money and he doesn't have success in any of these things. He just reads it online and he, he gets excited and he tells me what to do. So my first question is why should I listen to you broke Billy, you're broke. So I see this with a lot of content creators too. They, they create all this how-to content and here's why you should do this style content. And then they wonder why people are not listening. They wonder why there's not engagement. It's because you're not passing this test here. Why should I listen to you? So if you don't have a track record, break this rule. Even if you have a track record, 
break this rule and talk about things from your personal perspective on, on things that you've actually done, not on just what you read about and just want to theorize about. So here's what I do instead. We're already doing it here. Okay. I use I and me more in my content and writing and copywriting to sell my stuff, just like I did above right here. So this does a couple things. Number one, it forces you to only share what you've done. If you're saying, here's how I've done something or my plan for this, that is coming from your perspective and something that you have done or that you are working towards. And so now you're not just recycling theory from a blog that you saw, a how-to article that you saw, but you are sharing what you've done and your experiences. The second thing this does is it builds a stronger bond with your audience. They're going to start following you for you and your experiences and your track record. And they're going to start buying because they want to do what you did. So huge, huge results come from this, but it's a small change, a very small and subtle change. A bonus benefit is it forces you to go out and do more. If you don't have enough experiences and stories to say, here's how I'm doing this, or here's what I've done, or here's the results from this, it's because you're not going out and doing enough. So naturally, when you transition from this how-to mindset to here's what I've done and treating it like a public journal, you are forced to go out and do more. And that is going to help you get more results because now you have more things to share because you're trying more things. So let's take a look at some examples. This post below, this is a, these are all LinkedIn posts, by the way. It could have just said, if you want to learn something fast, you need to take action and stop spending so much time reading, which is generic information. Instead, I made a statement and I backed it up with a short personal story. So this is applied to real estate. The fastest way to learn something is to reduce the amount of time from theory to action. Instead of reading book after book, learn just enough to get in the game. Then let experience be your teacher and only learn more as needed. I did this recently with real estate. I spent a couple days learning, immediately started looking for properties. Two weeks later, got our first two properties under contract, which just closed. I already have a ton of new things to learn, but it's based on what I actually need now, not just learning to learn. Knowledge can be a curse if you let it be. So I could have just told somebody what to do without any personal context, but then I would trigger that. Why should I listen to you? Like this has no relevance because you haven't de demonstrated this in any real scenario. So now, because I added just these couple lines here about going into real estate and using this principle there, now I have a personal experience to back up what I say. If you look at any of my content, you'll see the same thing. Everything comes from a personal perspective or something that I've experienced or tried. And this keeps me away from regurgitating other people's stuff. So that's one of the shorter examples. I have two more examples on this page, but they're pretty long. So I don't want to bore you and read these. If you want to read this issue, just go to my site, seananthony.co. I just recently redesigned it. And if you go to newsletter here, you can read all of my previous Friday Fire issues, with, which is what this is here. So I have a couple more examples here, but this is all demonstrating this, this copywriting rule that I break. I don't focus on just saying you and your all the time and just make it all about the reader. I share things from a personal experience, and that seems to connect a lot better with people who are following me and also leads to a lot better sales and engagement and my audience growing at a faster rate. It is going to feel weird when you first start doing this, if this is what you're used to. It's almost going to feel like you're, you're being arrogant, like you're being a show off. But this is the reason why people follow you is because you are sharing things from your own personal experience and you're sharing only things that you have tried and done. And this has been one of the best changes by far that I've made to my content and copy in every single way. So I'm not saying, by the way, not to use you and your, but don't feel like you are forcing it at all times. And again, only sharing things that you have actually done without telling people to do things that you haven't done. So I hope that was useful. This is a small change that has made a huge impact on my business. A lot more engagement, a lot more sales, audience growing at a faster rate, more people connecting with my messages and reaching out to me and letting me know. And it's a small change. You can make this today. You can start moving from saying you and your all the time to saying I and mine, sharing things from your perspective. Okay. Now, if you like this, Posts, again, you can go to my site, seananthony.co. This is the homepage here. I just recently redesigned it. I'm going to zoom out. And if you go to the newsletter tab here, you can opt in to my daily newsletter. And then you can also read previous issues of my weekly series, Friday Fire. And you can also start to get future issues of Friday Fire delivered straight to your inbox. 
So all you got to do is go to seananthony.co and then put your first name and email in any one of these boxes, click subscribe, and you'll start getting my daily tips, daily braingasm sent straight to your inbox. So that's going to wrap up this video on the copywriting rule that I break every day and why you should too. Let me know if this is useful. Give it a like if you enjoyed it. Comment down with any questions and I'll see you in the next video. Take it easy.